Yep. Yeah. My fish tank's gonna crush the competition out there. Gonna take them out. Man, look, there's already a shrimp inside. Hey, what, what, is that is that a shrimp? Is that a shrimp down there? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So my pond here is going to be set up with a solar pump. Just like on our well up front, pumps up water to our tank up here above. It's not a fast stream, it's a slow steady stream. And so uh, like if I want to fill my water tank up top, it may take me like two or three hours, you know, to fill up that big tank up there if it's all the way empty. So uh, usually maybe about three hours. So that's the same pump I'm gonna put out here on this uh, tilapia pond. But what we're gonna do, as you know my wife likes gardening, right? And we're all about self-reliance and trying to grow as much as we can on our own. And that'll, right now we're not because we're building here and we're limited on space because of all the construction and the plants are easily damaged and all. But time will change that. And so we're gonna do hydroponics there off of that that pond and whatever we choose to raise in that pond we're going to experiment we may do a combination of shrimp and fish at the same time in there or uh, i may rotate and do different fish of course you get tired of the same thing being we're on solar i can harvest those fish Put them in a deep freeze and i'm not spending money on electricity for a deep freeze because the solar is going to carry that so um we brought that vacuum sealer you know from the u.s and all that uh, stuff for well actually we got more than one vacuum sealer and all that for vacuum sealing we're going to raise chicken as well and vacuum seal and put in deep freezes so say like we raised tilapia I'm not really looking to be selling tilapia. I don't want to get into all of that and you can get into permits and stuff too. I don't care for that. This is for our own consumption. So what I do is have a harvest, clean them, bag them, uh, vacuum seal them, and then you always have a source there of uh, food, you know? So we can do that. And then maybe the next time we want to raise a catfish, we can raise catfish in there, do the same thing, do a harvest, uh, maybe I want to raise prawns, do that. And I can raise those prawns sometimes in the same tank, same time with some of the fish. Another thing you can do, as I've studied this uh, through the years, and anybody got any input, I don't care, write it and share what you know. But, um, of course, I have been around raising fish quite a bit. In fact, my grandfather on my mother's side raised fish and sold them to places. So... Uh, and I had other family that had catfish farms and of course I got 16 ponds there in Texas but most of that stock ponds but we raised fish in those too so um, what I was going to get to there is that you can put a screen kind of like that screen I have over here on this uh, little nipple hut right here this shed I can make a grill to fit down in there and attach in we can make a, a frame and sit right in there and um, Put that screen on it and you can have a level and a level bin of like your prawns for instance and then your fish and that way you don't get any uh consumption of the prawns by the fish but some of them won't do it but this is what we're looking at probably won't be a lot of that this trip but we're trying to plan for the future so i thought that would be a very enjoyable thing to do is have those fish you can enjoy feeding them just like in your yard instead of feeding dogs we don't have no dogs her mom's dogs come over and visit sometimes but uh 
we don't have none of our own and so we're not spending money on trying to feed dogs or, or all that we can provide food to the fish instead of wasting it on dogs um, and, and like tilapia you can literally feed them scraps too I mean leftover rice and all huh? they they will eat it up so nevertheless there's a plan for everything and you don't have to have huge property to do some of these things especially if you're not selling and you're just raising for self-reliance and that's what we're about here raising these things for self-reliance i'm gonna let another cat out of the bag it's a saying you know if you you some people don't know those sayings you know i'm from a place that we have a lot of sayings you know a lot of those little sayings and I know it's the Australians too. They got a lot of sayings. So uh, I'm going to let another cat out of the bag. And that cat out of the bag is going to be that when I made that, that tank in the ground right there, I had positioned it where I could make another one the exact same size right up next to it. And so one long hollow block wall down through there, it's got a concrete liner on the inside. That will make the same wall for the next tank right there and I can have two of those tanks sitting side by side managing different things. I can even partition one of those tanks making it into two smaller tanks if I wanted to as well. So uh, that's my cat out of the bag right there. We'll see. The future holds lots of promises. Just keep your chin up. I got a point to prove. You see this little, maybe at the moment, a little over six foot tall, hollow block wall right here. It's got a big opening over here on the side for a doorway. And it's got one partition right over there that's maybe 30 inches wide. And maybe it's only six or less than six foot tall right now. There's another one like it on the other side. In the other room, just like it. Those two, those guys messing around with this hollow block making all that mortar mix. They used up more concrete messing around with this little old bullshit hollow block than I used cast forming big parts of these concrete walls. If you go back to one of my earlier videos and you'll see where we poured a whole bunch of walls here. And uh, when we figured up how many bags we'd use, we had used 10 bags. Well, for this little old BS, and I just call it like it is. This hollow block in the Philippines is BS. For that BS wall right there, that one and the other one, it has used up 12 bags of concrete. I could have cast poured. I just, I want to prove points. I could have, you still got steel in it. You got steel horizontal and vertical in it. You're still mixing and filling the hollow voids in there with concrete. So you're still mixing and making concrete inside of it and you're mixing up mortar and you got all that labor involved. Look at that, for just a couple sheets of plywood, I could have made that, mixed it and cast it and had a good aggregate stone in it for way less money. And they have spent uh, more time, believe it or not, on that. And then it still has to be rendered and used more concrete. And the reason being that it's consumed so much is because this mortar mix, this grout mix, has a whole lot more Portland and it has no aggregate. So there, you're not getting as much expansion out of your materials as you would. Plus, you still spent the money for the hollow block too. So all of you that think that it's cheaper to build a hollow block, you are out of your mind. I've tried to explain how cheap I've built this and you just don't get it. I want to build another home. I'm hoping I'm hoping that we buy a farm lot and uh, I'm gonna build a single story solid concrete house there and I'm going to keep up with the time, budget and money from the very beginning for that structure. Now I keep up with it for this, but for that structure, simple structure, one story, basic house and I hope that day comes that I can show how fast I can turn that out. This project has seemed long, and it seemed long because of the world crisis that took place, and uh, it held me up. And of course, at the same time, we weren't just building the house only, 
We've built an outdoor CR, we've done landscaping, we've done a water tank in the ground, we're doing this fish pond, we've done boat ramp, we've done fences, and we've done patios and driveways and uh, everything. So we have done a lot more than just build only a house here right now. Um, it's kind of like it's all growing up from the ground up, not just the house growing up and then a little blip, blip, blip all around it. But instead, it's all been a steady, steady progression over the whole property. I'm telling you, this is the cleanest, simplest way to do it right here. Look at this, door opening, ready. Look at that, just ready. Solid, clean, peel it, slick finish, ready to skim coat this out of date shit method that uh times need to be brought up i'm telling you here they are they're pouring the tank the far superior tank than any tank in bohol <laughs> so you can just use this plywood again and again and again. Miller, be sure and work it super good to the bottom so no gaps. Man, I can just taste my tilapia and my shrimp now. Mmm. Super good. Tilapia and shrimp coming up. I buy it in bugs. How many did you get? Fifteen. You had enough for it. We still got to pay the tricycle. Okay. Cool. Uh, 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 don't do that. Hey, leave that alone. run into a little bit of problem one side over here was two inches thick the other side was thicker I told them do not put tie wire on that bamboo I took it away from them earlier I went in the house and come back and they defied me and put tie wire anyway and so you, it can't adjust from one side to the other because all the bamboo is holding the plywood from moving So having to cut the ends of it off. Huh? Now we got a gap. Now we got space. Are you highway patrol? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, with the boots and the tight black pants. And the astronaut helmet? I think you're highway patrol. LTO? Not, not astronaut. <laughs> not astronaut. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could send you to Mars. I wish.
that needs it bad down there. Marvin, you know what you look like? You ever seen the cartoon, Marvin the Martian? Huh? Have you ever seen? Well, I'm gonna find that for you. He wears a helmet on his head just like that too. Marvin the Martian. With Bugs Bunny? You never seen that with Bugs Bunny? Oh my goodness. Heck yeah, boy. I checked that out right there. I decided to pull the forms on back out today as well and make sure if there's any places that we need to hurry and get a patch in before the concrete cures so it was still bond. So as soon as it was able to hold itself up, I pulled them so we could go in here and dress this thing. Sloped corners. Put a bevel around the bottoms in here. I think it'll work pretty good. There it is. One day job. Go we'll ahead up up here. So we did start forming up here of where the next wall is gonna be and there'll be three meters of glass and three meters of glass here. I tell you, I originally had it set for four meters of glass, but out here, I wanna place like a wall. Let me show you here. Let me get back, we're not so close. Apparently it's back uh, veranda, balcony, terrace, whatever your favorite term is. This was originally gonna be four meters of glass from there at that new wall over to the next column, then four meters again. But I decided to reduce it. So I'm gonna put three meters of glass in each spot, which is more than enough. I mean, a, a three meter wide window to look out here at the ocean. But it will give me a little corner here in the living room. When you come inside in here, it's the living room. It'll give you a little corner in case there's some furniture or something or you might want your TV up over near here and be able to sit and look at the ocean out the window and be able to have your TV without too much glare. I thought, you know, that would be nice. A little bit more wall space inside the living room area. And then outside here, you might want to put a piece of furniture or something and have a little bit of a wall. Uh, less likely something in that area to hit the glass and break it. So I, I went ahead and expanded that. Now, what you see here, it's not gonna be quite this wide. This, we're just not gonna cut the forms. It's about, I got a mark down there, it's about eight inches less on this side than what you see there. And it's about a foot less over here on this side. So, you know, you're, you're talking about, I mean, I'm just gonna round and say, you know, close to two feet less than what you're seeing right here on this. So if you're seeing eight foot of plywood here, it'd be more like six foot of plywood. Just round about. And uh, I think it'll work out pretty good. But we stopped forming up here. We were getting it all prepared. As you see here, we extended another column up today. Got that up. And we start putting the grid here for the wall prepping that so what we're going to be doing is pouring all of this is one section from this column this wall the two short walls and that column and that'll form like a big T all of that'll work like one great big column and beam at the same time so there you go you can see that Low in the two CRs down there they also work more finishing those walls all the way to the roof today. It's dark in there. It's not worth showing you. It's just dark, grim, concrete. So um, there was more work done down there as well. So I feel like it was a pretty exciting day. 
Melinda took driving school today. Mel had class today, and then at the end of the day, they took a test. And there, there was quite a few people, I guess, in the class. I don't know exactly how many. And uh, she thought that she's gonna be like the lowest score. And it turned out she was the best score. All right, well, I'm gonna close this video out for the day, for the second time. And everybody, take care. And let's look forward to another bright tomorrow. See you later.